All right, so let me show you how to set up Python for 3D local application development. This is the minimalist guide so that you can get something working locally without any internet connection thereafter in five minutes. Then after you just need to launch it. So within 30 seconds, whenever you restart your computer, you will be ready to code. It will be robust to any change of uh, libraries or operating system. And of course, it should be really nice to use and you should be happy with what you have. Right, now, what about the workflow that we will follow? It will be done in five steps. So let's start writing by setting up the environment, which will be Miniconda. To install Miniconda, you just jump right into your browser and you type in Miniconda. And all right, I accept everything. And you see that you have Miniconda. You have a link to install Miniconda and you can download the exe installer. So the thing here is when you click on it, you have various versions that you can choose from. Um, let's take the Windows 64 bits. But in this case, we are not sure what is inside. So what I would recommend is maybe go on to uh, repo Miniconda and maybe take a Miniconda with Python 3.10 or 3.9. So Python 3.9 or 3.10 for uh, your OS. So that could be something that works. So you download it. Then once this is downloaded, you can install it. So let me check it's finished. I click on it and then you follow up all the path. I agree here. This is for just me at this stage where it will be installed. So this is the destination folder. This is fine for me. You can move that onto another drive. And from there, you just register Miniconda, the default Python 3.2, and you click on install. Once that is done, all you have to do is press Windows in my case and tap Miniconda. And you see that you have a prompt in here. So in the terminal, what is interesting is in here, you have base, which means we are in the base environment of Anaconda. You can check all your environment by tapping Conda and list, and you will see that I have a lot of environment installed. So what I would like to do is maybe create a new environment, right? So I would do Conda create. I will just give a name, which would be setup uh, 3D. And here I could define the Python version that I, I want to use, so 3.10 or 3.9. So let me choose 3.10 at this stage. In here, it asks you to proceed. So you just tap Y and press enter and it will download some kind of packages. But the difference with Anaconda from Miniconda is that in here, you actually have a minimal amount of packages so that it's very lightweight and it's very small, right? So in here, we are good to go. And you can see that if you want to activate this environment, we have to use this line, right? So I copy and paste it. And now instead of being in the base, we are in setup 3D. Now that we have our environment set up, we can move on to step two, which is installing our libraries. To install libraries, it's best to use what we call a package manager, right? This library or package is used interchangeably. And this package manager will help us install these libraries. And I really recommend at this stage that you stick to only one, which is called pip. So you will do conda, install pip and this will install the pip package manager and this is what we will then use to install our libraries this will ensure that you mostly avoid any conflicts that we may have later on right so this is installed in my case it was already installed but then what you do is pip install the first library that will be using its numpy right so NumPy is a computational library that will be really handy to um, play with matrix and play with elements uh, like linear algebra. Now the second library that we can install, pip install um, scipy. This is for scientific computation. This is also very handy, especially if we want to use acceleration structures. So this is good. Uh, the third library that we can use is pip install uh, matplotlib. Okay, this is for data analysis at large. So creating uh, plots and creating graphics that can support some kind of experiment that you're running. Okay, so we have free library, NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. Now we can install pip install open3d. 
Open3D, this is the main library for 3D computations and 3D stuff at large. So very handy as well, because it will allow you to use some kind of data structure to handle uh, 3D meshes, 3D point cloud, and other uh, data representation. Beautiful. And the last one that is optional is scikit-learn. So scikit-learn. And this library is super handy to leverage machine learning and a bit of deep learning for tasks like um, object recognition, uh, linear regression, uh, lin uh, non-linear regression, and other advanced tasks, right? So at this stage, you have NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, three main library, Open3D for 3D library, and Scikit-learn for advanced uh, machine learning. Great, having the libraries installed, we can move on to stage three, which is installing our IDE. To install an IDE, which is an integrated development environment. We just use pip again, pip install, and we'll use spider. I really love this one because you can install it this way, like all the other stuff, which makes it super handy. You don't need to use anything else as a software installer than Miniconda, which we installed initially. Beautiful. Now that our ID is set up, we can curate a 3D data set. Right. Now let us gather some kind of 3D data set. And for that, you can just download down below the data set that I give to you, or you can go onto some open portals like Open Topography or Sketchfab, where you can download some kind of 3D models and a 3D point cloud. So make sure that if it's a point cloud, you choose PLY or an ASCII file format. And if it's a 3D model, you take an uh, OBJ, GLTF, STL or uh, PLY, uh, that will work as well. And it's time now to move on to actually developing with Python. And in this, we'll do the scripting. I will talk a bit about what is behind the processing exploration and everything with 3D visualization and export. Great. Now that we're all set up, all we need to do is actually code. So you can type in your terminal spider and that will open up the ID that we just install via pip. Beautiful. So when you first launch Spider, you should arrive to something that looks like this, but is not exactly set up this way. So what is essential to understand is that in here, this is where we will type actually our Python script that will give some kind of comments that should be executed, right? The big strength here is that we can write it, save it just like a file, and every time we open it this way, we can just run, and it will run everything that we have here. Um, in a one run time, right, sometime you want to explore what you have within a single variable. So this is where the console is very handy. This is where you will see what is executed, and it will hold everything that is temporary to a single uh, session, and you will be able to play with what is in the current session, right? And in here, this is where you will explore the variable if you need some help, if you want to profile and debug, and also the plots and the files that you have. So the first thing that you can do is actually download the Python file that is called start underscore 3D.py. And this will hold everything that you need to test your configuration. So this is basically where I give the credits or uh, whichever things that I want people to have in mind before using whichever things that I'm creating. And the first thing that I will do before executing my script, is click here and create set console working directory. And that means that everything will be expressed relatively to this file. Now, if I click on file, you can see that I have my start 3D and another region growing uh, sample that is here that we'll be using for the pre-processing operation, the processing operation, right? So now what I do, as you can see here, I like to create some cell so that I can run cell by cell. For that, I press shift enter, and this just run the single cell. We import the libraries. In this case, we have imported just two libraries, which is NumPy and Open3. The second thing that we are doing is loading our point cloud, which is called Navis Exterior, which is from a Navis laser scanner, uh, using Open3 EO read point cloud function from Open3. So when I execute that, our variable should be in here, and you can see that it's a point cloud object. Now, the next stage is to create some kind of pre-processing operation, 
Here I want to pass this point cloud object to a NumPy object so that I can play better with it and, and then I will translate it so that we can visualize it uh, better right after. Beautiful. As you can see, we have a point cloud with uh, 200,000 points and let's uh, visualize our point cloud by executing the next line. And as you can see, this is exactly what you get with open 3 So this is super cool because you don't need any external software. You can play with actually very big point cloud directly locally. And this is where it's very, very hard to replicate that with cloud uh, setups where you don't use your local computation capabilities. All right, so some very quick tricks here. Um, you can increase the size of the point or decrease that with plus or minus. And you can also show the normals. If I click N and decrease, you can see the normals in our point cloud. And you can change the color mapping, for example, to show uh, 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 the Z progression, right? In red, it's very high and blue, it's very low. One little trick that I can also show you that you can modify instead of having o3d.visualization.drawgeometry pcd you can just keep the draw like this and you see that it opens a window which is actually uh, very interesting in a way that you have um, some settings and here what kind of setting are interesting it's really like an app you can control the point size but that we already know we can control the shader this is standard but you can use the normal map or you can use the depth, which is cool. And you have some kind of lightning possibilities like dark shadow or things like this. And then finally, you can move within your point cloud, not with an arc ball, but you can move in your point cloud, maybe uh, with like a flying capability. I will change not to depth, but to standard. And then I could move around like a video game with um, Q, S, D, and A up and W down with the Azerity keyboard, right? So this is another thing that could be cool. Beautiful. So we loaded our data. We have our pre-processing operation. We explore initially our data set to see if that's right, right, we have. And then we have the processing operation. So in here, I import other libraries. But then usually I will then put that up all above with import libraries. This is just to show you that I actually created a little script that is just next to this one. And I call it uh, with the alias RG and I can use functions which are region growing normals and coloring segments that are expressed in this file. So now if I execute this cell, I have a segmentation algorithm that is finished in two seconds that will now be giving us some kind of result that we can visualize. And what I do is I replace the color by the new colors, random colors per segment, and I visualize that again. And this is the result that we get. Beautiful. This is all done with Python with our minimal setup, as you can see. So this is an example. You can do super, super powerful stuff. This is already something very powerful that has a lot of application. Um, where you can create workflows and solution that you can monetize very easily. So let me close that. And now the last stage is, of course, if you want to export, you have the ability to export. Uh, best case scenario is to create a, a result folder. In here, I could create a results folder. And now that it's created, because it's at the same level, we don't need that we could write and export. So let me export everything. And if I open now, we have two new data sets. So the PLY and the XYZ. Um, I use Cloud Compare to visualize outside. This is open source as well. And here you have it. The full setup is tested. You have the script to start from scratch every time with this loading, pre-processing, processing, visualization, exploration, and export. You can use these schematics for any 3D project uh, development, and that would be super handy for you. I like to make sure that you have everything handy under your hands. So just down below, you will find the links to everything that I mentioned. Also a little PDF that holds the comments that we will be using that are very handy. And a link to the data sets that I'm showcasing or one of them so that you can 
get started from scratch. And finally, the script, the Python script, the starting Python script is also available. Right, so this is a wrap up. At this stage, I highly encourage you to just create your environment, make sure everything is working properly with your configuration. And once that is set up, the only thing that you will have to do is to do your activation of your environment, activation of your IDE, and then you can start coding and visualizing point cloud and 3D data set directly with Python. I have no doubt that this will be really handy for you at any stage of your career. And I can only encourage you to continue on this path and let's see each other in the next video. Bye bye.